Hey, remember that time when we showed you how to rotoscope in After Effects? Well, today we're gonna do it in Mocha. Welcome to SUCFS, I'm your host, Mike Crockett, and this Saturday is when Horror Fest 15 happens in St. George, Utah, which means that we will be posting some short films during the month of November, and in the coming months after that. So, stay tuned, be sure and subscribe if you haven't already, and that's all. No, that's not all! Last time we showed you how to rotoscope in After Effects, with the promise to show you other rotoscoping methods in a future episode. Well, the future is now! Today we're going to show you how to rotoscope in Mocha, which, if you have Adobe Creative Cloud, comes packaged with After Effects. Now to be honest, I like this method of rotoscoping better than just doing it in After Effects because you can get more accuracy out of it. I showed you how to do it in After Effects last time because I felt like that would be a better intro to rotoscoping, and it's slightly less technical than doing it in Mocha. If you missed that episode, you can find it here. But, without further chit-chat... So even though we're doing this in Mocha, we still start by bringing our clip into After Effects. Now, I'm using the same clip of my son that I used last time, with him standing in front of this rather plain-looking wall. Make sure your clip is selected down in your composition, then select the Animation menu, and choose Track in Mocha AE. This will bring up Mocha, and a box to allow you to name your Mocha project, choose where it'll be saved, and some other options that you usually won't need to touch. Once you have your clip in Mocha, you can use your X-Spline tool to draw masks around your subject. Now, you'll actually want to draw separate masks around separate parts of your subject. In this case, I'm going to start with my son's head. You divide your subject up to get more accuracy and focusing on smaller parts of your subject at a time rather than having to deal with the entire burrito all at once. We'll get more into that later. Finish your shape by clicking on the first spline point you created. Down at the bottom you have several options for motion tracking. I like to keep them all selected because I have the processing power to do so. Click the track forward button and Mocha will go through frame by frame and try, keyword being try, to track your shape to your subject. It'll make minor adjustments on its own, but some of this process is going to require input from you. Once it's done, you can scrub through and look for the parts where this train goes off the rails, and adjust your spline points to follow the shape of your subject. Some keyboard shortcuts you can use are Z and left click to zoom in and out, and X and left click to move around your frame. Do this in key parts of your timeline where the tracking gets really bad, and Mocha will create keyframes to try and compensate for motion. Once you're done, scrub through your timeline and make sure you're satisfied with the shape. I didn't bother getting too accurate here because I wanted to demonstrate the process more than anything else. If you're satisfied, lock this layer in the Layer Controls panel and turn processing off for now. Also, be sure and name your layer appropriately. Now you can go back to the first frame and start on the next part of your subject and follow the same process. In this case, I'm going to do my son's torso. It can sometimes be a good idea to also split up the torso of a subject, but I'm not going to do that here. You do want to make sure that your layers overlap though, just to make sure there are no gaps in your shape mask. After I do the torso, then I'll do the arms, and abracapresto, you have your shape mask. Now what do you do? You can scrub through again and make sure that all your masks are the way you want them. You can also show your layer mats and scrub through that way. Once you're satisfied that your mask is good, click Export Shape Data, choose All Visible Layers, and click Copy to Clipboard. Yes, that's right. You're simply copying this data to your system's clipboard to be pasted onto your layer in After Effects. Now there are two ways to do this. One is to make sure that your clip is highlighted in your composition panel. Click the Edit menu and choose Paste. Then if you go into the Effect Controls panel, you'll see a shape mask that's been created for every mask that you created in Mocha. And you can see here that I forgot to name my son's left arm. Oh well. You can scrub through and see that your mask moves with your subject. Another way of doing this is to again make sure that your layer is selected in the composition panel down below. Click Edit and choose Paste Mocha Mask. Now you can expand the properties of your layer and find a separate mask for each one that you drew in Mocha. 
Frankly, I like this method better because it gives me a little bit more control over the edges of my mask. Now again, you can add different backgrounds behind your subject, like this nighttime fairy scene that I put behind my son, someplace every nine-year-old boy desires to be. Or again, you can add effects to just your subject without affecting the background by duplicating your layer, removing your masks from the bottom layer, and adding your effects to the top layer. That's it for today. Remember, Horror Fest 15 is happening this Saturday in St. George, Utah at the Megaplex Theater behind the mall at 6 p.m. If you're in Southern Utah and you have an interest in filmmaking, this is an event that you don't want to miss. My submission will be there in the festival as well as submissions from other pros and beginners alike, so come and enjoy. Also, be sure and subscribe so that you'll see when we post our short films over the coming months. And until next time, plan your shoot, then shoot your plan. <laughs>